Joining me now is Republican Senator Rob Portman of Ohio. Senator Portman, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thanks for having me on, you, Chuck. Uh, simple question. How do you explain what's going, inside, going on inside this party right now? Well, I don't think it's new. Uh, you know, you remember the Tea Party. You probably remember the moral majority. I mean, we have a spirited debate within our party again. Uh, by the way, the Democrats are not immune from that either. No doubt. You've got the uh, Bernie Sanders wing uh, pushing back against some stuff the DNC did last week, as an example. So, look, in, in both parties, um, there are very different points of view. And right now, you've got a substantial majority of Republicans in the governorships and the state legislatures, uh, both houses of Congress, and the uh, president just won. So, the party's in good shape, but uh, yeah, we've got some divisions. Do you think that basically Washington Republicans are out of touch with the majority of Republican primary voters? Is this something you came to a conclusion of when you were running for re-election last year? Well, I had a primary, uh, and I also had a, a general election that we won by 21 points in a state that's considered a swing state because we focused on working together across the aisle and getting stuff done. I mean, I was not shy about talking about it, and, and I was able to talk about specific accomplishments. Mm -hmm. 50 bills being signed into law by President Obama, by the way. And um, I think that actually is, you know, what people are looking for. I mean, when I was just home this weekend, I don't hear people talking about the latest in Washington. They're talking about, are you guys going to get this tax reform done? Because I'm looking for a middle class tax cut. You know, I'm looking for a way to get my, my, my earnings up, my wages up. So you don't think the leader, you don't think the, the leadership of the Republican Party is out of touch with the grassroots? Well, look, the, the, the Republican primary voters, uh, you know, have spoken in a couple of these primaries, but. Uh, particularly in Alabama recently, no question about it. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, uh, so-called establishment-type Republicans, yeah. uh, you know, one in Montana, one in Georgia, when people thought that those races were, you know, going to go the other way. So I think the, I think the party's in pretty good shape. I want to play, some, play uh, one excerpt from Jeff Flake's uh, floor speech earlier this week. Here it is. When the next generation asks us, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you speak up? What are we going to say? Mr. President, I rise today to say enough. Do you share Senator Flake's concern? He almost see this as an existential crisis that, the, that President Trump is bringing upon the country when it comes to sort of political discourse or democracy. Do you share that concern? So President Trump was elected, duly elected, including winning by eight points in Ohio, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, which is an overwhelming victory in my state. Um, and, um, you know, we've got to be sure that he succeeds because when he succeeds, the country succeeds. So. Uh, you know, I was, I was not someone who at the end was able to vote for him, but when he was elected, I said, uh, I'm going to work with him on tax reform, on addressing this opioid crisis, which you're going to talk about later uh, with the fire chief from West Virginia. And, um, you know, I think and, and that's our job. Our job is to actually get some things done here and help to influence the administration toward accomplishing so things that his, people care about. So because he won your state, that's you overlook things that concern you? Well, no, about he, his presidency? he won the presidency. <laughs> he's our, right. no, I understand he's that. our president. And just as I worked with uh, President Obama and President Clinton before him when I didn't mm -hmm. agree with them on a lot of stuff, uh, I think that's my job. I mean, I'm just talking about my job. I think it's to set an example of bipartisanship and civility and get things done. You mean character still counts in American politics? Of course. Yeah, of course character counts. And, and look, I don't agree with every tweet. As you know, I've spoken up uh, on occasion. And uh, yet, if you're uh, focused on the tweets and not focused on actually accomplishing what people are looking to have happen for them and their family, uh, you know, I think, I think you are getting out of touch with the American people. I, I want to also get you to respond to something Steve Bannon said about the Bush presidency since you served in yes. the Bush presidency. Bradley. Here it is. He has no earthy idea whether he's coming or going, just like it was when he was president of the United States. I want to apologize up front to any of the Bush folks outside uh, in this audience, okay? because there has not been a more destructive presidency than George Bush's. Do you, do you understand his criticism? Well, I'm, glad he, I'm, I'm glad he apologized to me. <laughs> and uh, so, <laughs> okay. who I uh, have a lot of respect for George W. Bush and, and what he did. It's a pretty a time large charge from a Republican president's former chief strategist. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, after 9-11, he brought the country together in extraordinary ways and uh, you know, dealt with a, a true crisis, not just um, here in this country, but globally, and uh, you know, he, he faced a, a lot of tough issues. And, and in my view, he woke up every morning focused on what was best for the country. And yeah. do you understand Bannon's beef? Well, you know, I I, I, I suppose on a policy basis, he thought uh, you know he should have been tougher on immigration, as an example. Instead, mm -hmm. George Bush tried to figure out how do you come up with a consensus on immigration, and uh, so he did propose immigration reform. And I think that's needed in this country. I think most Americans do too. Uh, I want to move to tax reform here uh, a little bit. This is going to be a, a big part of it. One of the 
initial votes you made and Republicans made in general was essentially allowing for more deficit spending if necessary to to grow the debt. Uh, you were concerned about the debt when Barack Obama was president. Let me play some clips. The American people are rightly frustrated by the fact that we have the biggest deficit in the history of our country and the biggest debt ever. Debt and deficit will end up in a fiscal crisis and an economic crisis. And it's a question as to whether we're going to just sort of turn our heads and you know okay. allow this to occur or whether we're going to actually deal with this issue in a way that's responsible for current and future generations. Considering the Senator Portman I heard there, how are you comfortable supporting a tax reform plan that would increase the, the deficit by 1.5 trillion over the next yeah. 10 years. First, I'm really excited about this tax reform because I think it will generate a lot more revenue. I actually think it will, over the 10-year period, Chuck, you're talking about result in deficit reduction. Why? Because for the first time in over 30 years, we're going to reform the tax code to provide a middle-class tax cut, which is really important, but also to encourage more investment for more jobs, more earnings, and to improve the economy. And what we've said is, if we could just improve the economy slightly, instead of the 1.9% growth that the Congressional Budget Office says is going to happen, let's take it 0.4% more. If we can do just that, uh, then we begin to actually reduce the deficit. And I think so that will happen. Do you realize it's hard to really believe the idea that somehow cut revenue, cut taxes, and somehow that's going to increase tax, not it, not, taxes? Not if, into, uh, it, not if you do tax reform. Okay, that, but at what point? It's not just tax cuts, But you're expanding the reform. deficit, too. I mean, it, it is hard for people to believe that, that somehow paying less into the government is going to increase money. Yeah, I don't know. I think most people believe the tax code is hopelessly broken, which it is. Well, I think they I mean, do agree with it's that. It's unbelievable. We have a tax code now that actually encourages jobs and investment to go overseas, and this reverses all that. And it's going to result in more investment coming here to this country more economic activity. I mean, everybody who looks at this tax reform proposal will be able to say, I think across the spectrum, this is going to change behavior. And it's going to change behavior in a way that encourages more job creation and economic growth. The question is how much? And, and, and my view is that this is actually pretty conservative because it's saying just a slight increase, again, 0.4% instead of 1.9, let's say 2.3% economic growth. We just had two quarters of 3% economic growth. And this tax reform will help to encourage that. So. I, I think, Chuck, at the end of the day, this is going to actually be reducing the deficit because it's going to finally get this economy moving. Before I let you go, uh, the president started talking a lot about Russia uh, again recently after something of a hiatus on the topic this fall. And I think it's because we know there seems to be some developments that are coming tomorrow. Let me play something he has said about the Russia investigation earlier this week. And I have to say, the whole Russian thing is what it's turned out to be. Uh, this was the Democrats coming up with an excuse for losing an election. They lost it by a lot. They didn't know what to say, so they made up the whole Russia hoax. Do you agree with the president? Too defensive. I mean, look, he won, and I think you would agree. He won the election fair and square. He's duly elected, and, uh, you know, we ought to instead focus on uh, the outrage that the Russians meddled in our elections, not just this last election. They did it long before Donald Trump. They're going to do it long after Donald Trump if we don't do something about it. So we need to get to the bottom of it. We need to go where the facts lead us. Are you concerned at all that the president might, you know, issue pardons too soon? Is there something Congress plans on doing if they think he's going to pardon people or maybe fire Mueller? Do you well, think? I, hope, I hope Congress will encourage that the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, which I think is doing a great job, bipartisan with Senator Warner mm -hmm. and Senator Burr, complete their work and that we support this investigation that, you know, the Department of Justice has now appointed this special prosecutor, let's, let's let them get to the bottom of it. I mean, I've, as you know, I've been involved with this issue for quite a while in terms of the disinformation that the Russians are doing, in terms of their meddling. And um, every American, Republican and Democrat alike, should be focused on that. Senator Rob Portman, I'll leave it there. Republican from Ohio. Congrats to your Buckeyes. Yeah. My Great word. Great game yesterday. Wow. Never, never something. give up. That's never a lesson. Up, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.